Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is especially a pleasure to uh, have my good friend, the Foreign Minister, uh, here at the State Department. We uh, work closely together uh, going back uh, many years now, including my last stint in government. And uh, we had an opportunity to see each other in New York at the uh, UN General Assembly for the uh, U.S. ASEAN meeting, but um, it's always uh, very, very uh, valuable for, uh, for me and for us to be able to spend time uh, directly. So Vivian, welcome. Uh, wonderful to have you here today. We had, as always, uh, both an insightful and productive meeting covering uh, everything from the important work in our bilateral relationship uh, following on Vice President Harris's visit uh, to, uh, to Singapore. Uh, to work that we're doing together uh, in the region, both uh, directly as well as through, uh, through ASEAN, uh, and really uh, affirmed the very strong partnership between the United States uh, and Singapore and a shared commitment uh, to peace, to, uh, to prosperity, uh, to a free and open uh, Indo-Pacific. Um, a number of uh, important initiatives that we've been working on, again, uh, coming out of uh, the Vice President's trip, particularly uh, our work to build uh, supply chain uh, resilience, uh, to uh, potentially cooperate uh, more when it comes to, uh, to space, and of course, uh, the vital work that uh, we're all doing to bring COVID-19 to an end and to address the challenges posed by, uh, by climate change. Uh, we spent some time, as I mentioned, talking about some of the regional challenges we face, uh, including in, in Myanmar, uh, as well as the uh, importance of upholding basic uh, maritime principles in the region as well. But we also have a piece of business to do, which is um, one that I take great pleasure in, and that is uh, formally renewing uh, an agreement that we're about to sign uh, on third country training, where together for the past decade, the United States and Singapore uh, have been working very closely. I think, um, Vivian, by, my, uh, by our count at least, we have uh, together trained more than 1,500 government officials from um, countries uh, in the region uh, working in areas like, uh, like cybersecurity, um, health security, smart cities, uh, and uh, Singapore and American um, experts working together, uh, teaching together, uh, sharing together, I think has been a very powerful thing. What we've agreed going forward is that we will um, make sure that there is also an emphasis uh, now on dealing with the climate crisis and environmental sustainability. Uh, and so in addition to uh, areas we've already been working together in uh, on training, we're going to make sure that, uh, that we do that. So simply put, uh, welcome, uh, my friend. Thank you for this partnership. Thank you uh, as well for the shared vision about uh, the future for our countries in a, in a free and open Indo-Pacific region. Well, maybe I get to respond to that. Uh, Tony, thank you for this uh, Wonderful opportunity to be back here to catch up with you in different incarnations, but you've been a friend and a partner for many years. But in fact, the United States has been a friend and partner to Singapore for decades. And we're a young nation, it's only 56 years, of which I think we've had relations for 55 years. And a lot of the success of Singapore could, can actually be traced to the United States' role in establishing a rules-based multilateral system, economic integration, free trade, and investments. And it's no accident that the United States is the largest foreign investor in Singapore, remains so by a large, to a, you know, by large extent, and remains a major trading partner to us, and in fact, still number one for services. And I don't even need to highlight the very close relationship in defense, security. These are long-standing traditional areas where there's been a huge reservoir of trust and goodwill. But now we're also looking to the future and following up on Vice President Kamala Harris's visit to Singapore, climate change, pandemic preparedness, supply chain resilience, other areas of global commons, including space, a new partnership for growth and innovation. It's a really full agenda, uh, fit for purpose for the future. So again, this is another index of a vibrant, up-to-date, growing 
relationship. And I want to thank you for your role in shepherding this through. Uh, I also want to thank you. Uh, I know how busy you have been, and you know, the Secretary of State has got preoccupations all over the globe, but you've spent more than your fair share of bandwidth on ASEAN and engaging all the, of us in ASEAN in Southeast Asia, and I'm, you know, I want to express a vote of thanks for that. On the third uh, country training program, it's incredible that it's been 10 years, and as you said, 1,500 trainees later, 50 agencies have been involved on both sides, and we're now updating it to include other emerging areas, particularly in the digital space, smart cities, uh, epidemic prep preparation. Uh, so this is our fourth cycle, and may we continue this for the long term. It's a wonderful example of how we can work together, do good together, and be helpful to our neighbours, especially in my neck of the woods. So thank you, and I'm privileged to sign this renewal. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Vivian. So, on to the signing. Now it's official. Yes. Signed and sealed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.